So, my session today is about getting you up to speed with some basic ideas of loudness and loudness measurement. I mean, loudness is, of course, as you know, the, the topic of all those two days. So, I'm here to you know, talk to you about what is it about this ITU standard and what did we do in the EBU. But we're uh, talking loudness today. And actually, I chose the title Loudness Zen, the kind of the way to reach audio nirvana, because the Zen concept has a lot of good merits. You know, it basically consists of simplicity and restraint and naturalness. So the Zen idea of simplicity and restraint and naturalness is something that we also uh, strove for in, in our loudness work in EBU. And for the first time, actually, I'm happy to introduce here with me together a partner and a co-host. So I've never done that before, but here is my co-host for today. Yeah, he's uh, a little bit grumpy at times, and by pure coincidence, his name is uh, Silvio, but that's just pure coincidence, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and he should be there to keep me on track when I, you know, when I get too excited and, and too enthusiastic, that, because he's a grumpy guy and, and he doesn't like stress at all, you know, so, so he should be really keeping me back on the ground. So, so Silvio will accompany me here in, and us on the session, and we will uh, ask his opinion at times too. Anyway, let's get started with our way to loudness nirvana, you know. And uh, the, the concept of nirvana, for instance, is something that, that Silvio knows very well, you know. He, he has been there, you know, but it can be not fun. But in any case, you see him in the state of nirvana, he's just being reborn again. Anyway, so he knows that very well, so that's why I have him here on the session. All right, um, let's just examine a few whys and whats and these kind of things. So what's our problem? You all know what's our problem. So we have this, still, we still have this concept of peak normalization. So we have one, you know, reference, which is up here, the peaks. And we have all these nasty loudness jumps, especially in broadcasting, as you know. We have loudness jumps when the first commercial comes in. We have another loudness jump when the next low-level documentary comes in. And we have the third loudness jump when the next commercial comes in or the promo. You all know the problem and the concept of peak normalization is one of the reasons for that. We'll come back to that later. So loudness jumps all over the place. And if you look at an average living room of today and count the number of remote controls, you know, that are lying on the desk, it's 11 remote controls here and seven of those in that special case, which is a a friend in Norway, have volume controls on it, or gain controls, as we say, you know. And they are the most used buttons, of course, on these remote controls. So wouldn't it be nice to get rid of them, you know, or at least to eliminate a couple of them, or at least not use them as much anymore? You know, that's, that's the goal. So we do have a loudness problem, a severe loudness problem, hopefully not as severe as for this guy. Yeah, but at least we have a loudness problem. <laughs> uh, just very briefly also, you know all that, but what is loudness in general? And that's actually very important to grasp, you know that, that it has to do with, uh, or it is, a subjective impression. And that makes it really complicated because in the broadcast world or in, as audio engineers, we need a, a box tool, we need gear to objectively measure loudness. And so it's basically impossible to construct a box that gives you a perfect representation of your subjective impression. And Bob has elaborated yesterday that preferred loudness is something that is very difficult to grasp because the preferred loudness for any piece of audio would be, could be very different for you or for you or for you, dependent whether you like it, dependent on your age, dependent on your mood, dependent how much vino rosso you had the last night, etc. So there's a lot of parameters that influence your perception of loudness. So it has to do with perception, and so it's impossible to construct a perfect objective box to measure loudness. So we have to, you know, abandon this goal that we want a perfect box to replicate our subjective sensation. So the only thing we can have is something that is good enough. And fortunately, we have that. That's a good thing. But we have to abandon the concept there's never going to be such a thing as a perfect loudness meter. 
it's impossible. Okay. So perception is the thing, so it has to do with our <coughs> ears and especially with a kind of gray mass in between our ears. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And as this is the most complicated organ ever, you know, it's one of the reasons why we cannot construct a perfect loudness meter. Anyway, let's make a very brief check about loudness, about our perception of loudness. And I'm going to play to you two sounds, pairs of sounds, and you can check for yourself which one is louder than the other one. Yeah, and we talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to play you these sounds, and we talk about it a little bit. I'm playing them twice, so they have an idea. And we have to be quite, you know, very quiet because they're very low in level. So let's start, and you can tell what is louder afterwards. Again. So, what was louder? Or equally loud, or whatever, one or two? Hmm? Equally. Equally. equally, equally, George. Two was louder. Two, two, two louder, two, equally, yeah. Equal, equal. equal. yeah, okay. Okay. Well, it was meant to be almost equally loud from the perception. And now you are all audio engineers, so you can tell me what is the electrical level of those two? Second one bigger. Yeah. How much? 6 dB. 18 dB. 8 dB. 20 dB. The second one is 20 dB higher in electrical level. So that brings us to the equal loudness contours, as you know. So that's about a 40 phone stuff, what you're playing here. So we have the first band is 1.5K to 3K. It's the octave from 1.5K to 3K. So exactly in that region where we are most sensitive. And the second octave is 50 to 100 Hertz. So that's about the 20 dB in level difference, but that gives you the same perception. You know? So that's one thing. Our hearing is very non-linear, and as you know from these curves too, the non-linearity -lin changes with our listening level a lot. And the loudness box cannot, can also not anticipate it, because the loudness box does not know what our listening level is. So that's complicating it even further. I have another example for you to judge. Again. Okay. Which one was louder? Same, softer. First one was louder. Other opinions? Second one? Same. It's about the same again, yeah? But you see, there is a different perception already now. Dependent on what? Peak level, yeah, of course. So what is the difference in peak level between the two? What do you think? First, first one more, first one higher, how much? Same? 10 dB, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, the first has 10 dB higher peak levels because it's these really high transients of the hooves on, on, on the concrete. The second one is compressed, compressed music. So the peak level difference is now 10 dB. Perception again the same, but peak level difference 10 dB. So if both of them are normalized according to their peaks, the second one is 10 dB louder, of course. So that's another thing, you know. These things are very related also to peak level, peak perception, transients, all sorts of things. So, yeah, it's a complicated matter. That's basically what I want to illustrate here with those two short examples. You know, it's not really easy to construct a box that mimics how we perceive things, loudness-wise and peak-level-wise. 